What's up, you guys? Welcome to the April 2nd edition of NBA 3-Ball, presented by Establish the Run. I'm your host, Mike Gallagher. Getting ready to preview a little bit of Friday stuff and break down the Thursday NBA action. A couple of close games, a couple of blowouts. That's what happens in the NBA, right? So let's start with the news in 10 minutes. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe, please. We're going to hit Houston here. Got some quotes I want to talk about and some news. John Wall is questionable. Now, I would be shocked, to be honest with you, if he plays. Because Stephen Silas said before their last game that he wasn't even going through like light walkthrough stuff because his knee wasn't feeling great. Uh, he didn't confirm or deny the reports of uh, the knee cleanup that we've heard so much about. It's it's shutdown watch time uh, for John Wall. Uh, great article from Kelly Eco in The Athletic talking about Kevin Porter Jr. kind of taking over the team and how he's like the future is now kind of thing. It was a really good story. But that was really great. He also said he kind of likes playing Christian Wood with Kelly Linick together. Now, not starting. He kind of talked about that sub-pattern where Jay Sean Tate would slide around, come out early, and they'll probably do that again. So expect similar playing time as the Nets game. Uh, and yeah, he said he wants to get KPJ the ball a bunch. And he also said he likes Sterling Brown off the ball. So, I mean, he clearly wants KPJ to just dominate this offense with Christian Wood, who we talked about also kind of trying to find his, uh, his shot more. So KPJ and Hunt should be pretty attractive against a Boston team that's struggling. Also, time order off the injury report. That's good. Got some good news in OKC, and that is Alexa Pokashevsky is off the injury report. So, it uh, looks like he had a false positive, only missing one game for health and safety protocols. That's great news. They missed him. As it turns out, Justin Jackson was the backup point guard with his touch time. Uh, Cambridge William played the backup. Obviously, Taylor Maladon handled the ball a bunch. But don't forget, I mentioned the last three ball with, with Pokashevsky. They want him in the paint. They want him driving. They want him running more actions. We've seen Point Poku before. He's going to get a lot of opportunity here in a terrible matchup against the Suns. But really encouraged with that. Uh, Isaiah Roby also has been just really good. Their best defender by far. Um, really the only guy that can do what they want him to do and just guard Pascal Siakams and all these other guys. So uh, I think Roby's still going to be fine. But Pokashevsky will certainly cut to Justin Jackson. Cambridge Williams the most. Uh, maybe Svi because he may not be as likely to close. And Maladon will lose some ball handling as well. One last one here with DeMontis Sabonis is questionable with that thigh bruise we talked about returned. Uh, Bjorkman talked it down after the game, but kind of talked it up today. So, you know, maybe he doesn't play. It is a it is a back-to-back, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, and one guy who would obviously benefit would be Miles Turner. He has awesome splits without Sabonis, 23-10-2 and uh, versus 12-7. So, like, almost double uh, as far as scoring goes. So you got to feel pretty good about Turner in a pretty good matchup against the Hornets. We'll talk about what happened with the Hornets today in a sec. 76ers get the win in Cleveland. Shake Milton off the bench was really the story. Great game from him. This is likely the last game without Joel Embiid, so I wouldn't really put much stock into it. Obviously, Embiid coming back will suck up a lot of usage, so Curry having a good game, which they really need, obviously, if they want to make noise. Curry has to shoot the ball great. Uh, ben Simmons was kind of bad. Um, got shut down uh, a couple games. So we'll see what happens with that. Certainly uh, no concerns there, but getting and be back, uh, this team could start to string some wins together again. Cavs get Kevin Love and Matthew Delvadova back. Kevin Love played 20 minutes, was on fire early in this game. Uh, kind of fizzled out a little bit after that, but that's actually an awesome sign. Uh, getting 20 minutes, getting multiple cents in the first quarter, I thought that was a great sign too. So got to feel good uh, about Kevin Love right now. I, I was dogging him. But, I mean, he's not going to play in back-to-backs. He's going to have a ton of minutes limits on him. I don't think he'll ever get to 30 minutes per game this season, you know, consistently. So, um, that was the – but, yeah, like I said, great news. Uh, Dean Wade, 38 minutes as they went kind of big here. And Isaiah Hartenstein, also uh, another pretty solid game. 12.7 boards, one dime, and two blocks. This guy's pretty good per minute. So, uh, we'll obviously have Larry Nance come back. And, obviously, Kevin Love coming back will also hurt your Dean Waynes and Hartensteins. So, yeah, I mean – you really can't call him ad just because uh, all the guys that potentially could come back as well as Jared Allen. Piston just smacked the Wizards. Uh, Josh Jackson just goes off for 31. They couldn't stop him. Scott Brooks talked about it after the game, how they couldn't like turn his water off because he kept scoring on them. Uh, also, Dennis Smith Jr., active, doesn't play. We'll see what happens with that. Killian Hayes also could be back next week. There's a beat, uh, kind of a guess on it. Uh, James Edwards, who's freaking awesome, one of the best beats out there. Uh, he was kind of thinking that Killian Hayes could be back next week, so keep that in mind. Uh, that'll cut into the a little bit. It's going to be a real mess, especially if they want to evaluate guys in phases. So, I mean, Josh Jackson was great and all. I wouldn't kind of run to the waiver wire. Diallo should still be pretty good as far as floor goes. 
looks like he's going to earn playing time until he starts playing poorly, which may not happen. No Bradley Beal again. I mean, just a total gut punch to anyone who's lost three Bradley Beal games in the fantasy playoffs. Uh, besides that, nothing to say besides really the centers again. They're splitting it right down the middle, kind of. Uh, Robin Lopez played pretty well off the bench. Alex Lynn was pretty good in the first unit. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they're both kind of like streamers. Uh, I prefer Lenz upside a little bit more because he's a little bit of a better shooter. Uh, he can get real hot with blocks and obviously probably has a little bit more of a ceiling uh, than Robin Lopez does just because he's starting. He's starting kind of for good reason. So if he stays starts hot, he can kind of get more run. And quickly, just Denny Avia is playing a ton. He's going to play a ton when Bradley Beal comes back. Like, that's just what's going to happen. So, yeah, he's not going to be great, but the playing time's going to be there. Nets get the win. LaMarcus Aldridge, pretty good start. Uh, 30 minutes after the game, Steve Nash said, we thought we got to get him going, so why not put him in the starting lineup see if he can get his rhythm. So, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, the other big story here is DeAndre Jordan, DMPCD, was a back-to-back. But, I mean, you could think that was maybe why, but... Steve Nash said he's got to stay ready. Now, when Steve Nash says stay ready, that means you're in what he calls his stay ready groove. So that means you're out of the rotation and you'll be in when somebody gets hurt or missing a game. So that's awesome. So Nick Claxton, he beat out DJ. That's number one. Number two, the Marcus Aldridge playing 30 minutes is going to not be great for Claxton. So Blake and Claxton work well together. That's awesome, but... For Claxton to really be a guy you're plugging in your lineup and feeling good about, he's got to hit like 18, 19, 20, almost like Time Lord. Uh, it's going to be very similar to that. And obviously, they're not going to play centers 48 minutes. They want to run small. They want to run Jeff Green at the 5. So they're going to run Blake at the 5. So it's going to be real tough uh, for Claxton to generate his value. And then front courty wingy-wise, obviously no James Harden. Still sounds minor. Uh, MR came back clean, so it's a day-to-day thing. Also, Kevin Durant likely out at least two more games. Keep an eye on that. And Jeff Green really, really stepped up, which is not surprising. I mean, this guy can score when you need him to. So he'd be the pickup, I, I guess, here uh, until we get the, the star nets back. Hornets got blown out, and nothing really to say other than Malik Monk sprained his ankle. Something's going to miss time. That sucks. Uh, Brad Wanamaker is going to probably play it according to James Borrego. So uh, just when Monk was rolling, man, I wrote this whole thing on how great he's been for matchups today, but it got deleted. Miami gets the win. Victor Oladipo makes his debut. Just 23 minutes there. Some foul trouble. Cut him down a little bit. Don't worry about that. He'll be fine. He's just Victor Oladipo. So expect him to be a little up and down. Uh, Duncan Robinson still got 37 minutes. That'll trend down, especially when Gordon Dragic come back, who did not play. Uh, and no setback. They're just being careful with him. So he'll kind of be they'll manage his minutes. He's getting up their age, obviously. But very noteworthy that Kendrick Nunn was available, did not play. So looks like Oladipo, for now, will affect him the most by far. Tyler Hero should be affected maybe in certain matchups, but he's kind of rolling again. He got 20 points today, well-rounded game, efficient. That's what you want to see. So maybe it took a really long time for Tyler Hero to get going, but uh, maybe this pressure of making a trade and hearing his name in, in trade rumors could get him going. And also Bielitsa, uh was the backup five, so Precious got bounced. The Magic win. Wendell Carter Jr. goes off late again. Love to see it. Chuma, great defense again. Man, uh, no Michael Carter Williams did not play for an illness. Also, Ken Birch was ill, only played five minutes. That explains why Wendell Carter Jr. got 31 minutes plus overtime. But, dude, it's on right now. Three games together, Wendell and Chuma have a plus 12.8 net rating in 44 minutes. Chuma has a 13 9 and 4 per 36 line with, o- with almost uh, four stocks. Wendell Carter Jr., 23 16 and 2.5 blocks. Like, just start him already, Clifford. Get with the freaking program. But regardless, you've got to feel so, so good about those two guys going forward. Terrence Ross, healthy for sure. Chucking for sure. Will be a little inefficient, but um, looking great so far. Pelicans rest Ingram, Zion, and Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball wasn't really doing anything in practice besides shooting and conditioning, according to Stan Van Gundy. So I think he's out again today. So Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 31 points. Another opportunity, I think, is on the horizon again today. Uh, Josh Hart, 47 minutes. Eric Bledsoe, 46 minutes. They'll be dialed back a little bit. I would assume one of Ingram or Zion are back. Uh, first game missed for Ingram, so keep that in mind today. Hawks get the double OT win on the front end of a back-to-back. Trey hurt his knee, was doing nothing through three quarters. Had, I believe, seven points. Finishes with 28 and 12 assists. Just crazy overtime out- output. Uh, Capella also dinged up his heel, so those guys are probably on the injury report. We know Hunter's out, we know Collins is out, so they might be like really shorthanded today. Uh, Gallo had the craziest pump fake. Uh, it's on my Twitter if you want to check it out. 
Spurs can't hold it in the double OT loss at home. Derek White hits seven threes for 29. DeRozan does his thing with 36. DeJounte plays a bunch. Pirtle plays a ton. Uh, Kelton Johnson lost minutes to Rudy Gay, who played pretty well, and Patty Mills, who did not play well. But yeah, nothing really to go on here. Kelton certainly lost his must-hold material. Not much to say on the late game. Paul George coming back, that's obviously huge. You can probably drop Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard. Ads-wise, Kyra Lewis, I'm going to add him until they start getting bodies back officially. Uh, Jeff Green, I mentioned, with until KD and or Harden get back. Josh Jackson, see if he can stay hot. We know he can kind of get rolling. Killing Hayes is worth the stash if you got room. Cody Martin's kind of a streamy guy with Monk out. Hardenstein and Wade until we start to see these Cavs officially come back. That's it. Enjoy the weekend.